a message on God's wonderful heart of love for us and his provision for our salvation through Jesus Christ. All right, morning everyone once again. I just want to take a few moments to share with us uh, a simple message that hopefully will enable us to understand the meaning of Christmas, why Jesus came into this world 2,000 years ago. Now, for some of us, this may be a reminder. You've probably heard it several times before. For some of us, this might be the first time you're hearing a message that uh, explains uh, in simple ways why Jesus Christ came into this world 2,000 years ago. One of the, or one of the very important passages in Scripture that captured to us the message of the Bible are those verses in John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Those verses are very familiar to many of us. Uh, some of us may have been exposed to them right in Sunday school and memorized them. But I just want to bring our attention to those two verses of Scripture. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, which the Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever, anyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal or everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Now, these verses can be personalized, meaning, uh, you know, instead of talking about the big world out there, you can just say it in a way that's very personal. So we could say these scriptures like this, for God so loved you, or God so loved me, that he gave or he sent his only begotten son. So that if I, if you, believe in him, then you will not die. Or I will not die, but I will have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn you or condemn me, but that you, that I, through Him, might be saved. You can personalize it, and it's true, because you are in the world, you're part of this world. But look at that. Why is there this whole issue of death and eternal life or everlasting life? So obviously that death is not just talking about physical death. It's talking about something more eternal in nature. That we are all doomed to eternal death. But God is offering us eternal life. And He sent His Son into the world not to condemn us, not to distance us from Him or distance Himself from us, but rather through Him, through Jesus, we might be saved, that we might experience salvation. But what is this thing about salvation? What, are, what does God want to save us from? What is it all about? And so I want to quickly summarize the message of the Bible. You know, back in the Garden of Eden, or in the very beginning of the Bible, the very first chapter, the Bible tells us that God created everything. So there is this implicit truth or understanding that there was or there is this eternal God who created all things, who brought everything into existence. And the Bible teaches us that God created man and woman. He put them in the garden called Eden. And in the very beginning, there was this perfect harmony, this perfect understanding, a relationship between God and 
Adam and Eve, the people he created. They were created in his image. They were created as part of his family. They were created to have this wonderful relationship with him, to walk in harmony and communion with him. And they were created as his agents on earth so that through them, whatever God desired could be dispensed across the earth. And everything was perfect. There was no sin, no sickness, no disease. That was the perfect world in which God put Adam and Eve. With only one requirement that they walk in obedience to him. He told them, don't eat of the tree uh, or the fruit of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Don't do that. But the Bible tells us that Satan came. He deceived Eve and Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They did the very thing God told them not to do. And in so doing, they came in subjection to Satan. They came in subjection to the devil. And they lost that relationship with God. They lost that connection with God. They lost their place as part of his family. And that began what we call as the fall of man, the, the decline, the deviation from God's original plan, from God's original design for the human race. The Bible says, through one man, sin came into this world, and death through sin, and this passed upon the entire human race. And so here we are thousands of years later, again, still struggling with that first sin. The Bible tells us that all of us, all of us have sinned. We've all come short of God's standards, of the glory of God. We've all sinned. Now, sin has its consequences. And we would all agree with the scriptures when the Bible tells us there is no one who is righteous, not even one person. There's no one who does good. There's not one perfect person who ever lived on the earth. And sin has its consequences. What does sin do? First of all, sin, the Bible tells us, separates us from God. It separates us from God. So God is a holy God. We are sinful people. And so we have no access to God because sin becomes this barrier to God. So, you know, so many of us think, you know, I have some sort of a relationship with God. I'm very spiritual. I'm very religious. I do this and I do that. And, and we think think we have a relationship with God, but this barrier of sin actually prevents us from connecting with God. The Bible says your sin separates you from your God. Sin holds back the very blessings that God wants to bring into our lives. In Jeremiah 5 verse 25, it says that, that it is God who gives rain. It's God who blesses us, but your sins have withholden these blessings from you. They cut off the flow of God's blessings in our lives. Sin has that uh, problem or that's that effect but the biggest effect that sin has upon each of our lives the bible says is that the result of sin is death and this death we're talking about is not just physical death but it's a death that eternally separates us from god in hell a future that god never intended for you and me that was not god's original plan but our sins are taking us there to be eternally separated from God in hell. The wages of sin is death. So when Adam and Eve sinned, the, 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 that sin had long lasting consequences on the human race. It put us in subjection to Satan. And so the devil began to bring into this world things that God never intended. Sickness, poverty, confusion, all kinds of evil came into this world. All of creation began to deviate from its original design. God's design was perfect. He never intended for any person to be born deformed. He never intended for any kind of di disease to come in. But because of the fall, there was corruption. There was decay. There was a deviation from God's original design. Now, for God so loved the world. God's heart of love for you and me, for the human race, never stopped. Even when sin came into this world. And even when everything began to deviate from his original design, God never ceased to love people, to love you and me. Now, we couldn't save ourselves because we were under sin. 
There was no person born from Adam's time who was perfect, who was sinless. Each one of us were under sin, under Satan, under the results of sin. So we couldn't help ourselves. Some people lived probably better than the others, but everyone was still born in sin. Still subject to sin. So there was no human person who could save us, who could help us. No religious leader, no philosopher, no great teacher, no leader could save people from their sins. And so God decided to do something for us. And that's why Jesus Christ came into this world. So what had to happen? Somebody had to be born of the human race, of Adam's lineage. But yet this person had to be without sin. And this person could then do something to save this human race. This person, born of Adam's race, could then represent the rest of mankind before God and before Satan. This person, born of Adam's race, but without sin, born not in subjection to the devil, could then stand before God and say, God... I have no sin of my own. And so I will suffer the penalty for the rest of the human race. And this person born of Adam's race without sin, without subjection to Satan, could then go against Satan and say, on the behalf of the rest of mankind, I am coming in conflict with you and I will overthrow you. I will crush you under my feet and my victory will be their victory. But the big question was, who could this person be? Who could this person be? Who was born of Adam's race, but born without sin, born not in subjection to the devil, who therefore could correctly represent the rest of us before God and against Satan. Who could this be? There was not one single human being who could qualify. The only option God had was, if I became like one of them, that was the only option available. Only option. Now, just simple reasoning, God is perfect. He doesn't need 11 attempts at this. He can do it one attempt. So in one attempt, which was God becoming a man. And this man we call Jesus Christ. So Jesus was not somebody who had his beginning 2,000 years ago. Jesus, the Bible says, was from eternity, from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. So this baby born in a manger was almighty God, the eternally existing God, the God who created all things, in whom are all things, for whom are all things. This eternal God now subjecting himself to frail humanity, omnipotence coming in the weakness and the frailty of a human body, omniscience coming in the limitations of a human mind, and omnipresence coming in in the confines of this physical body. That's who this Jesus was. God coming as a man. And he humbled himself to do this. He was born of a woman. But he was born without sin. Born by the power of the Holy Spirit. He lived this sinless life, not once yielding to sin, temptation, or any work of the devil. And this man, Jesus Christ, could fully represent you and me before God and before the devil. But what did he have to do? He had to pay the price for the sins of the whole world. Sins of people who died in the past. Sins of the people who are going to live in the future. He had to pay for the sins of the whole world. 
And that's what Jesus did. He was born 2,000 years ago. God became a man. He lived a normal human life. And, and at about 33 years of, 30 years of age, he began what we call his ministry. He began to preach. He began to announce about the things of God, the things of the kingdom of God. He healed the people of their sicknesses and diseases, showing to us that's who God is and that's what God wants to do. He cast out evil spirits so that people were tormented and oppressed by Satan and his demons. They, they were set free and he said that's what God wants to do. The Bible says he, this Jesus, was the image of the invisible God. Man always wanted to know what, was God, what does God look like? Does he look like the sun? Does he look like the moon? Does he look like some crawling thing? Does he look like some animal? What does God look like? And then the Bible says this man, this Jesus, is the image, the exact representation of the invisible God. If you want to know what God looks like, look at Jesus. If you want to know what God would say, listen to what Jesus would say. If you want to know what God would do, look at what Jesus did. He is God who became a man to represent God to us, to reveal God to us. So he healed the sick. He cast out devils. He worked miracles. He's sowing to us. This is what God wants to do in our lives. But the greatest thing he did was to go to the cross. On the cross, two things happened. Jesus represented you and me before God. He said, Father, I am taking the sins of the whole world. I am taking the sin of every person seated here. Your sin. Every wrong you've done before God. Every sin you ever committed or will ever commit was placed upon Jesus Christ. And the punishment, the consequences of those sins were put upon him. Words are insufficient to capture the magnitude of what took place on the cross. Words cannot describe the, the significance of what happened in the spiritual realm. The Bible simply says, He who was without sin became sin for us. The Bible simply says, All of us like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord has laid upon Him the sins of us all. All of us. Put the sin on him. Punishment for those sins. And Jesus represented you and me before the Father said. E every sin they were committed. I am paying for it. Paying for it. He was the only one qualified to do that. On that same cross the Bible says. Jesus disarmed Satan. That through his death he crushed the head of Satan. Representing you and me as God, he didn't need to do it for himself, but he needed to do it as a man for you and me. So there was one man who paid for the sins of the whole world. His name is Jesus. And there was one man who crushed the devil under his feet. His name is Jesus. And he did it not for himself, but for you and for me. Representing you and me. And when he had finished the work, the Bible says... That on the third day he rose up from the grave. He rose up alive. The work is done. He resurrected. He showed himself alive to his disciples for 40 days. The Bible says with infallible proofs. Unquestionable evidence of his resurrection. They saw him alive for a period of 40 days. And he gave them the great commission saying go to the whole world. Tell the whole world this good news. But God came into this world, paid for their sins, has risen up, he's alive. And if anyone, anybody believes in him, they will not die, but they will have everlasting life. Go tell the whole world, the work is done. The only thing people need to do is to believe in him. Believe in him, and they will not die. Believe in Him because they don't have to be condemned. But through Him, they will be saved. Go tell the whole world. 
go tell the whole world. And so starting from Bethlehem, from Jerusalem, the news is spread all over the world. And here you, you and I are today, 2,000 years ago, celebrating Jesus, but more importantly, remembering why he came. Why he died. And the response that God is asking from you and me. To believe in his son, Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Now why did God do this whole thing? The answer is simple. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you. That he gave his only begotten son. You are beloved of God. You are so loved by God. That he did this very thing. Of coming as a man. To do this work. So that you and I. Could be saved. Through Jesus Christ. But there is one thing. That God requires of you and me. Which is to believe. In the one who came into this world. To believe in Jesus Christ. Whoever, anyone who believes in him. Will not die. But have everlasting life. Now everlasting life. Means God's life in you. Starting from the moment you believe. The moment you believe. Several things happen. Your sins are forgiven. Because Jesus paid for your sins. And you are accepting what he did for you on the cross. The moment you believe. You are saying Satan. You no longer have authority over me. I am changing sides. I am going across to Jesus side. So the Bible says God delivers us from the powers of darkness. He translates us into the kingdom of his own dear son. Immigration happens. You go out of darkness into light. Out from the power of Satan into the kingdom of God's dear son. And then at that moment you can say, devil, you have no authority over me. No right over me. No claim over me. I have transferred. I have moved into the kingdom of God's dear son, of Jesus Christ. The devil will have no right over you. That moment everything Jesus died to bring you for you through his cross becomes available to you. Healing for your body. A breaking of every yoke, of every bondage, of every oppression. Every evil work of the devil that has come against you in your life. You have a right to say, no more devil. Take your hands of me. I belong to God. Healing can come into your body to replace sickness. Peace can come to replace confusion. Freedom can come to replace bondage. Deliverance can come to replace areas where you've been held captive. And that's the wonderful thing that happens the moment you receive the eternal life that Jesus Christ offers you and me. But you and I have to receive that. By believing in the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that if anyone believes in him, they will not die. But will have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Amen. So I'm going to lead us in a very simple prayer this morning. I want to pray first of all for those of us who after having heard this message, you say, you know, I need to do that. Maybe you, you know, you, you've, you've been in church for a while and you've been going in and out of church, but you personally never told Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. You be my Lord. You be my Savior. I believe this message. I believe what you did for me. Maybe you've never done that. But this morning is your opportunity to do that. There is no compulsion. It's a matter of decision. It's a matter of you making a choice in your life to do this. 
I'm not saying something fantastic or something, uh, you know, you're going gonna to feel something happen. No. I was just this morning, I was praying and I was remembering how God touched my life as a 12 year old. My teacher told me, pray this with me. I didn't know what I was praying. I just prayed it with him. There were no angels singing, no choirs, no roll of drums, nothing. I, I didn't feel any different that moment. But I know my life changed. Something happened. Because the next day I went back to the chapel. Uh, that was not normal. I would go play football or cricket. But next day I went back there. Soon I started reading my Bible. Now, this, nobody was forcing me to do it. Because God touched my life. In a simple prayer. And the same thing can happen to you today. We're going to pray a very simple prayer. You may feel something. You may not feel anything. Don't worry about the feeling. The fact is, when you pray that prayer, God in heaven hears you. And your life will change forever. It will change. You will be saved. You will receive eternal life. So I want to lead us in a simple prayer for that. And then I also want to pray for those who might be sick, suffering in their bodies. Jesus came to heal us, deliver us from everything. Every consequence of sin and every work of Satan. So I'm going to just pray over our lives. And I believe that as I do that and you pray with me, God will do something in your life. He will heal you, deliver you, set you free, work miracles in your life. Whatever you want God to do, you agree with me as we pray. And then you can testify of the goodness of God in your life. Let's pray together, please. Can remain seated and I'll just pray from here. So this morning, if you would like to make that decision to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to accept God's great love for you, and say, yes, Jesus, forgive my sins and, and, and save me. I want to receive this eternal life. Then please pray this prayer with me. You can say this. If you've never done this before, Please pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I believe you love me so much that you came into this world 2,000 years ago. I believe you died for my sins so that I could be forgiven. I believe you rose up again and you're alive today. I receive you. Into my life. As my savior. As my Lord. I receive eternal life. Which you give to me. From this moment on. I am yours. I want to follow you. And you alone, the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anyone here, you prayed this prayer with me, whether you're up in the balcony or you're seated down here. You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. We want to celebrate with you. We also want to give you what we call as a new believer's bag, a green bag that our greeters are waiting to give, give to you. So if you pray this prayer with me for the very first time, if you don't mind, just please raise your hand wherever you are. Just raise your hand. If you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time this morning, raise your hand. Let's see your hand this place. Anyone here this morning? I see one hand right way up over there, the back. Anyone else? So anyone up in the balcony? Just raise your hand. I see two hands up in the balcony. God bless you. Anyone else up in the balcony? Uh, they, they right, see, I see it right up in front here. Just raise your hand. Several hands up there. Four, five hands up on the balcony. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else here? God bless you. God bless you. Hands raised up. God bless you. Just 
keep your hand up so until our greeters come to you. And then we'll give you all a good hand clap once we're done giving you the bags. Just hand, several hands up, up in the balcony, several hands up in the auditorium here on the ground. Just make sure every one of you get a green bag and a card that says decision card. So if you can just write your name and your number, our greeters will come back to you and receive that card from you in a few minutes from now. So... I want to make sure, anyone else, anybody left out, you, you prayed this prayer with me, but you didn't get the bag yet, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, okay. All right. I just want to make sure, everyone. All right. So please take a few moments. Just write your name, number several up in the balcony. Uh, thank you for doing it. Our greeters will come to you right now. Collect the card from you. Greeters, you can just go back to them, collect the cards from them. So, and uh, what we will do is if by Monday or Tuesday, somebody from the church office will call you. Uh, and they will tell you how to use the contents in the bag and how to grow in your faith and uh, encourage you in the days to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now let's pray. I just want to pray for us for the other needs that are here. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He's the unchanging, eternal God. When he walks this earth, he healed every person of every sickness and disease who came to him in simple faith and said, Lord, heal me. That's all. They came to him in simple faith. He healed them. He cast out evil spirits. Spirits that torment us and hold us in oppression and bondage and addictions and confusions. Disturbances in our lives. He set people free from those things. He worked miracles in the situations of people's lives. And he is doing the same thing today. Right now, as I pray, I want you to pray. Look to Jesus. I believe that right now, as we pray together in this place, the Lord Jesus will be the same Jesus to you. I stand here in the name of Jesus Christ. Under the power of the Holy Spirit. And devil, I take authority over every work you've done in the lives of people in this place. Satan, in Jesus' name, I destroy your works. I destroy every work of sickness, disease, infirmity. I destroy it now in the name of Jesus. I command every foul spirit. Of sickness, disease, infirmity, disorder, confusion. I command you foul spirits to come out. Of the minds of the bodies of people. Release them. I declare them free in Jesus name. I declare every person healed. I declare every person delivered. I declare every bondage broken. So that people are set free. Right here, right now. In the name of Jesus, every addictive behavior, every compulsive, obsessive behavior, you are free from it now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I also pray that you release miracles into the circumstances, into the situations of people here. God, those who are going through difficult times, God's divinely intervene in their lives. The financial situation, the situation, the workplace, the job. Send your interventions, Father. And according to your word, Lord, you said that when you dwell among your people, you will satisfy their every need. You will cause light to come upon their path. You will cause them triumph over their enemies, over those who oppress them. You will cause them to triumph, God. You will crown your people with loving kindness and tender mercies. And so, Father, release that now in each one's life. And I thank you for doing this in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at abcwo.org. Also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.